Welcome. This is the demonstration and tutorial video for the ARM Salt 2 uh, modding toolbox for 3D Studio Max. Uh, in this short series of videos, I'm going to be showing you how to work with the toolset and going to pretty much work um, uh, through this model from start to finish from the way it is now, which is basically just completed modeling uh, to uh, imported P3D model in Oxygen 2. Um, what I have set up for this tutorial session is well, obviously you can see this model is editable poly. Uh, what you should take care to do if you want to eventually export your models into P3D format to be usable in ARM SL2 is that um, the model itself has been carefully constructed to have uh, triangles and quads only, so no polygons with more than four sides. Um, and at the same time, uh, the smoothing groups of uh, all the polygons have been carefully looked at to make sure that the smoothing of the polygons looks right. So, for example, if I have these two and I switch out the smoothing group, they will look. Uh, jagged. So they should be smooth, for example, on curved surfaces. On flat surfaces they should be completely um, no smoothing groups applied, for example. You can see here. Okay, that takes care of the model. It's one object right now. Uh, you can see the, the pivot is somewhere randomly placed. Um, other things that I've really made sure to have is my folder for this in disk P. Um, I have my texture set up for a super shader. So I have the normal map, the specular map, and detail map. What I don't have is the uh, ambient shadow map, which I'll be showing you how to make in a second. Uh, and the color map, which is basically the texture. I'll be showing you how to put it all together to make sure it all exports correctly. Now, uh, uh, let's start up the toolbox. Uh, as you can see from the previous version, there's quite a lot of new things in here. A lot of things have also been changed, so previous uh, from previous version, uh, things like the, the CFG generator has been completely overhauled, made Many times better, with the possibility to open, close files, open and save files, and reset, and so forth and so forth. It works much better now. <coughs> no. Okay. Well, the first thing I'm going to do before uh, for, for for the setup of this is I'm going to create something uh, new that hasn't been in the previous version, and basically it's just a three-point light setup. This will improve my visualization of the model in Max. So it's not extremely important, but you will see that it will just look better in the end, just in the viewport. So, okay. And quickly, I will demonstrate a log system, which is basically a mirror of the layer system in Max, but with a bit more uh, armor oriented uh, direction and a few more possibilities. So right now I'm going to create a new LOD and you can see here I have different uh, ARMA2 presets already but I'm just going to say this is other. <coughs> and I'm going to take these lights Take these lights and I'm going to move them to other. Okay. And you notice in the load system if I press on the load, it isolates it. That's it. So now we're set up and we're ready to proceed.
Okay, so with the model and texture setup, uh, as you can see, we have no CFG file, no uh, uh, animations set up, uh, we have no uh, material file set up, and this is where I'm going to show you everything is going to be created automatically for you once you're exporting the model. Let's see, I want to make sure our, uh, our units are in meters so that transfer of uh, the model will be one to one. You never have to worry about scale again. Let's see, what can we start with? Um, first things first, also I forgot to mention in the previous videos that uh, the model has been UV mapped already. Uh, it has uh, uh, all the UV coordinates have been already set up. Um, what I'm going to do now is create that amb uh, ambient shadow map that I was talking about before. Now, one thing you have to know about ambient shadow is that it cannot be more than 1512 by 15 by uh, 512 by 512, I'm sorry. Um, um, yeah, and it should be in a red channel, so using the pink and white preset here. Other than that, the texture module hasn't changed a lot since uh, since the previous version, so that will be familiar for many of you who have already used the panel pack. What I'm going to do now is going to uh, basically call it the same, but Yes, on the end, and the uh, post fixes on uh, files, texture files are very important. Okay, and I'm going to click preview button and click apply. It's going to take a few minutes to render this out. Many of you would be happy to know that uh, the plugin now automatically sets. Uh, Metal Ray as the default uh, as the default uh, render, so don't have to worry about that. Uh, it looks a bit spotty, so maybe we can increase the quality a little bit. Um, of course, if you want to render out uh, ambient occlusion maps for, to use in textures to blend them in into the actual diffuse uh, map, you would be using the black-white uh, uh, combination. And if you were using any diffuse colors of the model, then you could have been uh, doing this through here, exactly the same method. Okay, so that goes through the texture model, and now we're ready to separate our model and create some name selections. Okay, well now we're ready to get a bit more technical. Uh, first, what I'm going to do is to divide the model into logical parts. So obviously parts that will be animatable. We have the turret here and we have the gun here. Obviously the gun has to be moving independently of the turret while still being attached to it. Also, the first thing I'm going to do is select the, all these parts and we're going to detach them separately. So that's not correct, but it doesn't matter now. But now they're two, two separate objects, and that's the important part. What is important is for you to name them correctly. Uh, the names that they will be using will be carried through through the model CFG file and through your hierarchy and and many many different things. Um, so it's very important to keep the names correct. Um, what you have here is the name selection module. Also, didn't change much from the from the last version. Um, just to break through for those people who haven't used this before, uh, it runs off something called the selection name sets. Uh, which we can generate through by clicking here and using this little window. Uh, basically, you can uh, predefine names, recognizable names, to some mumbo jumbo names that you'll be using and reusing a lot. So, have or whatever. Add them and add a huge list, and then you can save the selection name set to a file 
which you, you can then load for example like I have here and reuse on many of your vehicles uh, time and time again that you've come to do a project so that's the name selection set all I have all I need is here as far as I can see so I'm going to be using this one but if you create a new one make sure that after you created it you click on the refresh buttons so that it comes up in the list okay so if he was being selected um, I'm going to take this object I'm going to call it turret name pops up make sure it's correct okay and gone remember that names are technically not necessarily have to be um, check anymore so just make sure everything is consistent okay and if you had something like wheels uh, let me just quickly show you right. um, so this. let's say I had uh, wheels on this vehicle what you can do is select them select wheel let's say these are left wheels so I'll select the side left and I make sure it's a sequence because I selected many objects and click preview I will have left wheel hash hash means it will be number and click apply left wheel one two three four five six and so forth so that's useful for when you're creating many objects and they need to be uh, have different names assigned okay so we have turret and we have gun that takes care of the name selections what you have to know is that max does not allow per vertex name selection as per se so uh, when you're exporting the model to p3d uh, the name selections that will be generated that will be generated from the names of the object as a whole so I cannot select, for example, these vertices and assign a completely different name selection to them. That's unfortunately not possible to do in Max. Uh, or it is possible and just way too hard and really not worth the effort. Where O2 can let you deal with that very quickly. That's it. Names are set up and we're ready to move on to lots. Now the LOD module is uh, something completely new, it wasn't uh, in the previous version. It is directly linked to the layers, as you can see I have the same layers. And uh, But it allows you to work more intuitively just like you did in Oxygen 2 for example. Double clicking on a LOD will hide everything else and just make sure just the LOD that you're working on is visible that will uh, make sure you're working on the right one uh, without forgetting anything. Um, there are a few tools here like adding LODs, editing the names of LODs, duplicating LODs could be handy, uh, deleting them and make sure you refresh it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a few more LODs and I'm going to do that by duplicating this one. So, I'm going to make one, one. And duplicate it again, lot 3, let's say lot 10 or something. And this is just to show an example. Um, I'm also going to create a new lot. As you can see here, you have a few presets which are named, uh, which have the same names as the ones in the O2. Uh, let's see, I want to have a shadow volume 0. Okay, now I have all the memory has been uh, created by default when the plugin was run. So let's see, now I'm in lot 10, which is this one. Um, lot 0, and it will stay the same as it is. Lot 1, let's see, I'm going to delete some parts.
ideally of course you will want to not just delete parts but uh, create whole new models for different laws or do some kind of mesh reduction to make sure you're really reducing your polygons okay well that's one that's lot three uh, let's see in lot three we're gonna so remove this 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 that's a shitty polygon here I find out. Okay. And again this. Say so I'll remove that. And now you see in lot ten I'm still have I still have a copy of lot zero, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete lot ten. And I'm gonna duplicate lot three to be lot ten. Okay. Not 10, and here we're gonna again delete some parts. Oops. To make sure I have them, you know. I'll just demonstrate that it will be different when you export it. Um, shadow volume empty. Ideally, you want to create a nice low poly shadow for your model. Well, what I'm going to do again is I'm going to delete this and I'm going to duplicate lot 3 to or actually lot 1 to be the shadow. Shadow 0. So lot 3 is now shadow. Um, if I want I can turn lot 10 to be anything else, whatever, and you can have as many of course as you want. In the end, all of them will be exported to O2 without any problems. Just make sure you have unique names, uh, and if you use the presets, then it will be much easier uh, exporting, as I'll show you later. And that's it, that's my lot setup. Now it's time to create some memory lots. Now the memory load module hasn't changed much, but anybody who's ever done any editing for uh, Arma or Arma 2 knows that memory is very important. It defines the axes uh, of movement parts, uh, it defines some special points, and it's critical to have one. No matter what you're making, you probably have memory loads over there. And the memory load module, as I said, didn't change much. Um, uh, let's create some some points. Uh, let's see, let's create the axis for the movement of the turret. Okay. I'm going to cheat a little, so I'm just going to gonna create a circle. This is my cheat to find a center line. Of this of the turret. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on the snap toggle and select it at pivot. So let's turn it on. Pre press at point, and I'm going to click onto the circle and create a point there. Okay, now it's been created. You can't see it. Well, it's simple because that lot is being turned off. Um, you see here memory, that's the memory point. Uh, I can now delete this, turn off the snap, show points, okay, and unfreeze them. Mem point zero one. that's the first point we created, and it should be about in the center of the rotation of this turret. I'm going to duplicate it just simply by shift dragging. Mem point two, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Just drag it vertically down. 
since the rotation is around this axis, it doesn't matter where they are vertically. Well, I'm just going to put it here for consistency's sake. Okay, well, what I'm going to do now is define an axis. And it's done by pressing this button, and this pop up comes uh, into view. And what it lets you do is it lets you uh, assign these points to a certain object. And um, it's useful in a few ways. First of all, it will take the points and will give them appropriate names, as you can see, as you'll see in a second. And it will also move the pivot in max of the object to the to the axis of these that are defined by these two points, so that you can preview your animations in max. Uh, that doesn't really do anything for O2, but you will see them rotating around axis that they would be rotating in game later on. So what I'm going to do is going to select point one. Not worried about selecting anything I shouldn't be because I cannot select objects, whatever, I can only select points. And I'm going to select the turret. Okay. Now, click refresh. First thing you see is that these points have been renamed turret axis. Uh, so I just take the Take the, took the name of the object and uh, added uh, a suffix. It's very really handy for recognition. If I double click on any of the names in the list here, I will select both points. Okay, and we can see that uh, the pivot, which is this XYZ uh, uh, gizmo, has been moved exactly to the middle of these points on the line. So, rotation is exactly through the middle. I'm going to do the same thing for the gun. And, yeah, I could do the circle trick again, but I'm just going to go wild and experiment. Approximately like this. If not, I'll move it back later. So, I'm going to take that, again, duplicate it. Then point two. So both points are here. And same trick as before. Apply. Okay, gun axis has been created. Now you can see and the pivot again moved to these points. So if I would try to rotate it, whoa, it goes in the right axis. Well, not exactly right, but okay. It will do. <coughs> uh, make sure that if you are uh, working with any weird rotations, these are you know aligned to the world Z axis and they're around, uh, aligned to the world Y axis or whatever. Uh, if you're working with any other weird directions, then you select uh, local rotation in the coordinate system. It will make sure everything is working correctly and displaying correctly as well. So, you can check these are my memory points. Uh, if you want, you can. If you like to uh, view some geometry while you're working with memory points, I would suggest doing this trick, and then you can really not select any geometry while you're working with them. Okay, and that's it. And that's how the memory points have been created. Easy to access. Let's create just one more. Uh, over here for the light. So there's a bit more than just uh, access. On here. 
Okay. I can go back and use the name selection set to this. Oh, not sequence, just normal. Okay, so memory lot has been selected, has been created. Now, before I continue uh, with animations and everything like that, I just want to show you uh, one great new feature that I've managed to build into uh, um, this upcoming release is uh, the ability to work with materials and to preview them roughly in Max directly in the viewport. And um, one of the greatest things is that, well, everything is pretty much set up for you. Uh, second of all, the RV mod. Uh, file is automatically generated and placed in the right folder for you and you don't have to worry about anything and it is done not manually it, will, it is done on export so when you're exporting your p3d file if you just click save materials here it will export and generate all the files that you need so let me show you how this is all done what I'm going to do is I'll open up the material editor uh, I'm going to select all my uh, all my objects here, and I'm going to click on standard, and I'm going to pick Direct X Shader. And just discard all material. Okay, now this is Direct X Shader. Um, the shader here is not the right, so I'm going to click here, and I'm going to look for in your installation folder of uh, the Arma toolbox. There's a folder called Shaders. See, Shaders, <coughs> and pick the shader that you want. Right now, I only have the Super Shader ready, uh, but later it will be expanded by uh, Damage Shaders and uh, Glass Shaders, etc., etc. I'm going to select Super Shader. Open. Okay, and this is a custom written shader, uh, which allows you to kind of simulate the Super Shader. It's not as complex as the one uh, this showed on their uh, uh, wiki uh, site, but it does the job, and it it does it pretty decently. So about the shader, it's pretty simple. Uh, one thing you have to know is that not all of these features carry on into uh, O2 into the RV mod file, but I will show you which will which do and which don't. Cube map uh, doesn't. Uh, but I advise you to load the cube map from exactly the same folder shaders environment uh, output cube. Okay, that's just for a uh, Fresnel uh, reflection. Show you how that works later. Uh, diffuse, you choose your texture. So your diffuse texture. Ambient shadow is the uh, ambient shadow texture we generated earlier. Diffuse color, you can tweak it, but leave it white. Ambient color, same thing. Uh, these Fresnel um, values do not carry on into the RV map. They will have to be tweaked manually by hand because there is no correspondence to them right now. This is just for preview. Uh, specular color, you can leave it in white. Change it to whatever you want. This will carry on to the RV map. Uh, check our specular map detail map and normal map okay so all our maps have been uh, loaded into these boxes for the lights uh, this this is why the three point light um, creation was done in the first tutorial video just to show you I'm just gonna choose key light here key uh, fill, fill and back back it just will let you preview the shader in the viewport much better. Okay, so now the shader is ready. I'm ready to apply it to my model. And look at that. You can preview it now in the viewport with reflections and everything. When reflections start looking a bit funky, just play around with these values and
or you can switch it off completely if you want to. The reflections this is not not really important. Um, uh, one thing is also if whatever you're doing is still looking like it's having some kind of artifacts, just make sure you're not in orthographic view. Uh, go to perspective view, and it will look much better. You see some reflections there. So if you're making some kind of uh, aircraft or something with very shiny materials then this is great to see how it will look like with your textures in the end. Just for a preview. Okay, and that's all you have to do for the materials. Obviously everything that has different textures and different RV ma uh, materials should have a separate shader. Uh, one thing you should remember is also to name it. So I'm going to make it um, BMT one uh, zero one. That's going to be the name of this uh, material. Uh, if you're going to make a new one, also name it because these names will be uh, used to generate the name of the file and assign it to the model on ex export. Yeah, that's it for the materials. Everything set up here. Now, before I continue uh, with animations and everything like that, I just want to show you uh, one great new feature that I've managed to build into uh, um, this upcoming release is uh, the ability to work with materials and to preview them roughly in Max directly in the viewport. And um, one of the greatest things is that, well, everything is pretty much set up for you. Uh, second of all, the RV mod. Uh, file is automatically generated and placed in the right folder for you and you don't have to worry about anything and it is done not manually it, will, it is done on export so when you're exporting your p3d file if you just click save materials here it will export and generate all the files that you need so let me show you how this is all done what I'm going to do is I'll open up the material editor uh, I'm going to select all my uh, all my objects here, and I'm going to click on standard, and I'm going to pick Direct X Shader. And just discard all material. Okay, now this is Direct X Shader. Um, the shader here is not right, so I'm going to click here, and I'm going to look for in your installation folder of uh, the Arma toolbox. There's a folder called shaders. See, shaders, <coughs> and pick the shader that you want. Right now, I only have the super shader ready, uh, but later it will be expanded by uh, damage shaders and uh, glass shaders, etc., etc. I'm going to select super shader. Open. Okay, and this is a custom written shader, uh, which allows you to kind of simulate the super shader. It's not as complex as the one uh, this showed on their uh, uh, wiki uh, site, but it does the job, and it, it does it pretty decently. So, about the shader. It's pretty simple. Uh, one thing you have to know is that not all of these features carry on into uh, O2, into the RVMAT file, but I will show you which, will, which do and which don't. Cube map uh, doesn't. Uh, but I advise you to load the cube map from exactly the same folder shaders environment uh, output cube. Okay, that's just for a Fresnel uh, reflection. Show you how that works later. Uh, diffuse, you choose your texture. So your diffuse texture. Ambient shadow is the uh, ambient shadow texture we generated earlier. Diffuse color, you can tweak it, but leave it white. Ambient color, same thing. Uh, these Fresnel um, values do not carry on into the RV map. Yeah, they will have to be tweaked manually by hand because there is no correspondence to them right now. This is just for preview. Uh, specular color, you can leave it in white. 
change it to whatever you want. This will carry on to the every map. Uh, check our spectrum map, detail map, and normal map. Okay, so all our maps have been uh, loaded into these boxes. For the lights, uh, this this is why the three point light um, creation was done in the first tutorial video just to show you I'm just gonna choose key light here key uh, fill and back back this just will let you preview the shader in the viewport much better okay so now the shader is ready I'm ready to apply it to my model and look at that you can preview it now in the viewport with reflections and everything. When reflections start looking a bit funky, just play around with these values and or you can switch it off completely if you want to. The reflections this is not not really important. Um, Uh, one thing is also if whatever you're doing is still looking like it's having some kind of artifacts just make sure you're not in orthographic view uh, go to perspective view and it will look much better you see some reflections there so if you're making some kind of uh, aircraft or something with very shiny materials then this is great to see how it will look like with your textures in the end just for a preview okay and that's all you have to do for the materials obviously everything that has different textures and different RV mod, uh, materials should have a separate shader uh, one thing you should remember is also to name it so I'm going to make it um, BMT1 uh, 01 that's going to be the name of this uh, material uh, if you're going to make a new one also name it because these names will be uh, used to generate the name of the file and assign it to the model on ex export. Yeah, that's it for the materials. Everything set up here. Now on to the hierarchy and the animations. Now the hierarchy defines uh, how the parts of the model work together. Basically these are separate objects and they behave separately. Now obviously the the gun should be moving together with the turret when the turret is rotating and the hierarchy is here to help us with that. Uh, this transfers to your model.cfg file in terms of bones and connections. Uh, so you can easily define your animations quite quickly. Um, okay, let's start. <coughs> first of all I want to connect the gun to the turret and now I can do this with the simple uh, uh, max tools and it's basically select and link it's right here and looks like a chain and I'm gonna select this I'm going to click and drag from the gun to the turret Let's see what happens now if I go to rotation right you can get the idea so now they're linked they're still separate objects but they're linked to each other And this is great since I defined the the axis of rotation beforehand when I was doing the memory log, I can preview my animations and kind of already estimate, as you can see right above the the, um, uh, the gizmo right there, that 30 degrees should be probably the right amount for the pitch up of the gun, and minus five degrees should be the amount for the pitch down of the gun for example. So this is great. Without going to bulldozer and fiddling around with your model CFG file, right now you can already see what's moving, how much is it intersecting, what's going on. Alright, now if I refresh the hierarchy, I can see that turret has a child and it's the gun. Double clicking selects the, uh, the object in the scene. Okay, now I'm ready to define the 
animations in my model CFG file. Now, open up the CFG tool, and some of you may notice that it's changed drastically since last time uh, in the form that this looks much busier. Um, uh, there's been a menu added here. You can open previously made files. I have to mention that previously made files, I mean files made with this tool, not other model CSG files. Uh, the reason for that is, is you can see these um, markings, these comments here and here and here. Well, they're very special. Uh, they define, they tell the, this tool where everything goes. And if the file that you're editing does not have them, it will just not know what's going on. So that's important. Also, don't delete these uh, for obvious reasons. So we're going to define now the animations for our model. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to define a new class. Let's say tank. And this is a reference class. All it will be is just show up here, class tank. Something that this already defined, and we're just going to take it. OK. Now, my model is going to be called my turret, so I'm just going to write my turret. It Im it's important that this is exactly the same as the name of the file, of the P3D file that will be saved later. Uh, let's say it inherits from the tank, it doesn't inherit the skeleton, and these are the right selections. Okay. My turret takes from tank. Notice the hierarchy has been saved as it should be. Okay. If I wanted to, I could save another one and another one, and this gets updated so I can cross inherit from the, every class I create. And this is the main feature of opening other previous files: is that once you open it, it loads all the classes that are already in the file here, and you can reuse them. <coughs> okay. So our skeleton is set up. Uh, we don't need a reference class for CFG models because all I'm going to do is just reference from default. So I'm going to go again my turret. It's going to come from default. Not going to inherit sections. Uh, not going to inherit animations because there are no in default. Skeleton, my turret. Just uh, the one defined here. And add. Okay. So that's my turret model CFG class it's, uh, created. Now I can add animations to it. My turret, that's the class. The animation does not inherit from anything. And the name of the animation is main turret. Let's say the first one, yeah? And it's rotation about the y axis. Remember that in Arma, y points up. Strangely, okay. And the source it will be taking from is main turret, and its properties are selection. I just double click turret, it appears here. Add axis. New feature added. I can click here, and I have all the memory points that are in the model in the list here. So I can also double click them, and it appears here. Um, axis, let's see, angle zero, and it will be <coughs> rad minus 360, angle one, rad 360. And that's all about it. Uh, that's about all I need. So I'm going to add this. Main turret class has been added. Okay. So now when I have a main gun animation, and it's going to be rotation around the x-axis. Source main gun. Uh, it's uh, angle one. Let's delete this. Angle one is the upper, so let's say 30 degrees as we saw before. Angle zero is minus 5 again like we saw before uh, selection is gone memory point will be access gone access ok and that's it create it has been created click on save 
model CFG, say, and that's it. Our, that's our animation file created. Of course, it can be much more complex if you're creating more models than one. Uh, if you're creating a lot of animations, no matter what, you can do it here. And you forgot to put something into your model CFG file. No bother. File open. And that's it. That's ready. Now, as we export the model, the animation should be there. No. <coughs> well, that's it. Pretty much the only thing left to do now is to export our model into O2 and uh, start enjoying it. Um, all the things that we have set up will be useful now uh, as we're going to uh, automatically export a lot of stuff. Uh, the, the exporter for P3D it took a long time to get it well right. It's not 100% right, but it's it does its job uh, to 99.99% uh, satisfaction level. So there's no no hiccups yet. Um, and um, I tried to get it to be as um, efficient as possible and as easy as possible to use. Everything to save time. Now I'm going to show you how it works. First a few options, save texture, save materials. Unless these are checked off, they will not be saved. Um, if you check export selected objects only, it will create a P3D file with uh, only one lot, 0, 0.0, and in it you will find only the objects that you have selected in max. So if I would have selected this and now press export, that's what it would happen. No, we're not going to do that yet. We want to export all our, all our lots. So let's see. Um, this is uh, an important box. If it is empty like it is right now, if I press export, nothing will export. So nothing is being done. Uh, what you should do is select a lot in the available lots uh, dialog here. Uh, click on the corresponding lot. If it's a resolution, you can add it and give it a number. So and press add. Same thing here. One add uh, shadow volume, shadow volume zero. Add. That's a lot of work. That's you know, if you have a lot of lots that you want to go just all at the same time, uh, it's a lot of clicking and pointing. And especially if you're not satisfied with something the first time, you have to redo it the second time. And blah 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 blah. So that's why uh, there's automatic determination here. And this was, this is uh, important when you were creating lots right here. You were using presets. Now, if you use these presets, the automatic determination will work. It will determine all the lots where they should go. So let's try it here. Bam. The resolution lots, memory lots, and shadow volume lots. That's uh, that's clear there. The other lot that was created with the lights didn't get included. That's exactly what we want. And that's it. Click export and keep your fingers crossed. My turret. Important, it's the same name as was defined in the model.cfg file. Save. And just hope for the best. Okay. Um, as far as I can tell, that's it for Max. Now we turn over to Oxygen. I'll open my turret. Okay, so it loaded. First thing you can notice selection names, they work in every LOD. Speaking of LODs, the LODs are there as well. Shadow volume LOD is wrong, but we can change that. No, it's zero. That will be fixed in the final version. Memory LOD is here, but that's three different selections. Okay, first thing you want to do is select your model, press F5 just to recalculate the normals. So you should always be doing that in any case, but for all your resolution loads, that's important. Okay, um, shadow volume. Now there's some prerequisites on shadows, so I'm going to recalculate the normals first. 
and then I'm going to first structure topology find non closed. If there's something, some open polygons, and you want to delete them, uh, then it has to be sharp edges. Press U for that and structure triangulate. Everything has to be triangles. And the last thing I want to do is I'm going to press W to invert the normals of the uh, of the polygons. This is a cheap trick to make your shadow lots uh, work a lot better. <laughs> so if you're having trouble uh, seeing some weird shadows popping up, try doing that. It might help you. Okay, uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add lot no shadow one. Copy this. So that they don't create self shadowing. Okay. And I am going to uh, show shadow, uh, maybe multiple lots. In any case, I'm going to start bulldozer. Before that, before I go there, I just want to also. Uh, demonstrate that if you're using the new version of O2, you can have the direct text preview here of your textures. You can see it. Make sure you have this click on. And you can see the UV maps and the smoothing groups have been carried over. And previewing bulldozer. And that's it. Shadows are there textures are there, you can see the normal mapping is there and for the grand finale if I turn my mouse wheel I have animations if I click my mouse wheel I change the animation source if I roll my mouse wheel again I'll see that's from minus 5 to plus 30 and for the turret it goes around 360 degrees and uh, that's it the model is there. In a little over 20 minutes, we've brought over a, a mesh from Max to O2 with animations, with material assignments, with different lots, with selection names, uh, saving an enormous amount of time doing all the stuff in, uh, in O2. Uh, all these new features are included in the upcoming release. Uh, thank you for your time, and I hope you liked it.